hey guys, here is everything you need for forces and energy in NXL physics. If you want to follow through as we go through the video, if you can get loads of those questions, all of the units that you need to learn physics, because there are a lot of those, you can get that in the free revision guide, which you can download from my website. The different types of energy can be remembered by using Geek's Lunch. I will admit, the U doesn't stand for anything. Gravitational potential energy. Electrical energy. Elastic potential energy. Kinetic energy. Sounds energy. Light energy. Nuclear energy. Chemical energy, as in batteries or food or in heat or thermal energy. You'll notice most of these involve more than one type of energy. For example, in the phone, we have electrical energy going in, but we have chemical energy being stored, and then heat energy, because your phone gets hot, light and sound energy coming out. With the match, we have chemical energy being stored and then kinetic energy being used to strike the match and then heat, light and a bit of sound energy coming out. With the fireworks, it was stored as chemical energy and then we are going to have it transferred into kinetic energy as it moves up. As it explodes, we're going to have light, uh, heat and sound energy coming out and then gravitational potential energy as it starts to fall, kinetic energy as it falls back down. The law of conservation of energy tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is only transformed into another type of energy. Which is really cool because it tells us that the energy you're going to have for lunch or breakfast today has been around since the start of the universe. That the energy that's powering um, your computer, your phone, your lights has been around since the start of the universe. And the energy that you are using, the kinetic energy, the chemical energy that you are using today to get out of bed, to do your daily things, is going to be around till the end of the universe. While energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can be wasted. Wasted energy is any energy that comes out of a situation that we didn't intend for it to be there. For example, in a light bulb, we have electrical energy going in. This is converted into light, heat and sound. The light is the useful energy, whereas the heat and the sound are not useful energy. They are wasted energy. And a worthy example would love to describe this if we can say that the wasted energy dissipates into the surroundings. It spreads out so much it can't be collected and used. It's not gone, it's still there, it's just spread out, it's dissipated. When we want to visually show the efficiency of something, we can use a Sankey diagram. So on this side we have the energy going in, in this direction is the useful energy, in this direction is the wasted energy. So in our example here of a blender, the energy going in is going to be electrical energy. The useful energy coming out is going to be kinetic energy and the wasted energy coming out is going to be sound energy. Now the reason I've switched to graph paper for this is because we can put numbers on it. We have 20 squares going up that way and that could be 20 joules. 15 squares going this way and that could be 15 joules and five squares going that way, and that could represent five joules. The units might change for this, but what the key thing is, you need to count the number of squares, assuming it's on graph paper, or if they ask you to sketch it, make sure it is roughly in proportion. To calculate work done, that is force times distance. Work done is measured in joules, force is measured in newtons, and distance is measured in metres. And from this we can say that one joule is equal to one newton metre. If we want to work out the change in gravitational potential energy, that is equal to mass times gravity times the change in height. Gravitational potential energy is measured in joules, Mass is measured in kilograms, gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram, and height is measured in metres. 
to work out kinetic energy, that is half times mass times velocity squared. With kinetic energy being measured in joules, half is just a number, so we don't need units for that. Mass is measured in kilograms, and velocity is measured in meters per second. And it's important to note for this one that the here it is just the velocity squared, not the whole thing. Power equals energy transferred over time. The units for power are watts with a capital W, energy transferred is joules with a capital J, and time is seconds with a small s. Efficiency is equal to useful power out over total power in. And this can be a percentage or a decimal. Efficiency is equal to useful energy out over total energy in and this can be um, expressed as a percentage or a decimal. A scalar quantity is going to be just a number. A vector quantity is going to be a number and a direction. For example, distance is scalar, but displacement is vector because it's distance in a direction. Mass is scalar, but weight, which is your mass upon the earth, is vector. Speed is scalar, but velocity, which is speed in a certain direction, is vector. Acceleration and force are both vector and momentum is also vector. If we're looking for the resultant force, we need to find the difference between them. For example, here we have 10 plus 10 newtons minus 5 newtons is going to give us plus 5 newtons, which is going to be 5 newtons in that direction. For the second one, we have plus 2 newtons minus plus 2 newtons, giving us 0 newtons as overall resultant force, so there is going to be no movement. The moment equals force times distance. Moment is measured in newton meters, force is measured in newtons, distance is measured in meters. If our forces are unbalanced, for example if this force is bigger than this force, we're going to have a turning effect, whether that be clockwise or anticlockwise. If they are balanced, if this force and this force are the same, then we are not going to have a turning effect.